Hey guys, this is Nate with One Man's Odyssey. Today I'm hiking up to Hermit Peak in the Pecos Wilderness. I decided I was going to film a little bit of a channel update, but before I get to that, I have been tagged. That's right, I was tagged by the channel Chugo Hiker. He's a really awesome channel out of the West Texas, Southern New Mexico area. Typically does a lot of hiking in like the Oregons, the Franklins, the Guads. Really cool channel. I love, especially in his most recent videos, how he's been doing a lot of really good narrative. Like he tells a really good narrative around the hike he's doing. It's not just clips of video of him talking and hiking. It's actually almost like telling a story. It's really cool. Go check his channel out. But he tagged me in this YouTube video prompt for five tips for beginner backpackers. Now, I thought about this for a while and I really wanted to make these tips personal. That is tips that I have learned from experience. Tips that I, if I could go back 10 years from now and tell myself who was just getting into backpacking, never done it before, never really spent that much time outdoors before, tell myself these tips, I definitely would do so. So the first tip is don't hike the AT on your first trip. And I'm being a little figurative or general here. Basically what I'm saying is baby steps. Now, if you're like me, you're getting into backpacking partially because you have this romantic idea of spending a few nights in the wilderness, camping, hiking, experiencing solitude, seeing beautiful places that people haven't seen before. And so you probably want to get out there and do some sort of epic multi-day, dozens of mile trip. That's a bad idea for your first trip. I learned this from experience the hard way. So my first backpacking trip, I was 18. I had never done it before, never spent a night in the backcountry, never even really hiked with a pack on. And I somehow convinced three of my friends from high school to come with me. And we went to Southern Illinois in the Shawnee National Forest. We were gonna do some segments of the River to River Trail. So right off the bat, I'm making these mistakes, driving six hours from home, doing something like 30 miles over the course of four to six days. It's just a lot for somebody who'd never done that stuff before. And what happened is pretty much, we ran into a lot of problems that were pretty much beyond our control. They weren't for lack of planning. But because none of us, especially me who planned the trip, had any real experience, it was really tough to manage and we pretty much ended having to bail out on the first day, which was a huge pain, especially since we had to drive pretty far to get there. So really, I highly recommend keeping it close to home. Don't go too far away. You gotta build the skills, build the experience. You don't want to have things ruin your trip and then you're inexperienced and have to bail out or worse. So my next tip, is, you know, I hesitated doing it because Chuko Hiker actually picked it for his video. And I figured, you know, this, this tip kind of shows up in a lot of videos like this. So it's pretty important. So I decided to go ahead and say it, but it's test your gear at home before you go. Really, again, it's, it's the same thing with the first tip where could you manage potentially? Yes. I mean, I've taken a tent on a trail before without testing it at home and I've been fine. But the thing is, you know, you might have a trip where you roll into camp four hours before sunset, you're feeling great, you have tons of energy, tons of time, and you can sit there and you can sacrifice two hours figuring out a tent that you didn't test at home first. But you know, what can also happen, what's happened to me is you could roll into camp and it's after dark. The weather is not what you expect it to be. It's, it's really bad. You're exhausted. You are hungry and you've never set up this tent or this hammock before. And now all of a sudden it's dark, you're tired and you know, in, I've actually bailed out of a trip because I didn't test my gear beforehand and that happened to me basically. Rolled in, high winds, was trying to set up my hammock tarp, my overhead tarp, and just couldn't figure it out and had to bail out. My third tip I think could be a little controversial and it's don't cheap out on your gear. And you know, a lot of people they'll, they'll if you're like me, you got into backpacking. I got into backpacking when I was in college. I didn't have a lot of money, I was broke and what I did was I bought cheap gear. I bought $30 tent, $20 sleeping bag from Walmart, stuff like that. And you know what happened? It was like every single night I was miserable. If it rained, I got soaking wet because my tent was terrible. And the fact is, is when you're talking about your big four items, so that's tent, pad, pack, and sleeping bag, those things, they're life preserving gear. Maybe not the backpack, but the other three are. And so if you cheap out on those, you're really potentially running into danger. You know, the fact is expensive gear is expensive for a reason. Now I understand, you know, if you don't have the money or you don't want to spend the money to get that expensive stuff, there's ways around it. I would 
highly recommend more than anything buying secondhand. If you can buy on eBay or Craigslist or REI also sells used gear, those would be my first options because you can get really good gear for really cheap. Uh, the Kelty backpack that I have used in all of my backpacking videos, I got that for $35 on eBay plus $15 shipping. This pack, this day pack that I use in all my day hiking videos, I got that from Varusalika for like 20 bucks. It's a West German Bundeswehr backpack and you can get really good cheap gear if you take the effort, you're not in a hurry, you're patient. If you, can, if you don't have the time, uh, another thing I would recommend is renting. REI, if, I think you have to be a member, but membership is only 20 bucks for life. And they actually rent gear very cheap for our Big Ben trip. I rented a tent, worked out very well. My brother rented a sleeping bag. That worked out very well. You know, it didn't cost that much. To rent a tent for like five days was 26 bucks or something. And you know, also you have REI garage sale, you have REI, what's it called, outlet. So if you want new gear, but still a little bit cheaper, you know, you can do that too, or do sale hunting, but it really comes down to patience. There's things you can cheap out on for sure. Uh, I hesitate to say it, but clothes, right? You can typically buy pretty cheap non-cotton clothes on Amazon or something. You know, I don't know how durable they'll be, and they might be a little heavier than more expensive stuff, but you'll survive. Stuff like headlamp, you know, if you go to REI, buy a $40 headlamp, you're wasting your money. Really, the, a $5 headlamp from Walmart is gonna do you just fine. That's where I would cheap out stove. You could buy cheap stoves on Amazon. That's where I would cheap out. I would not cheap out in those big four items I mentioned. So these next two tips are a little more psychological. The first one is just do it. And you know, when I was getting into backpacking at the start, I found myself finding excuses not to go. You know, I would plan epic trips and then not want to drive all, the, all that distance to go or not want to spend three days away from home. I would think, uh, I would, you know, I, I lived in Albuquerque for four years, probably went hiking in the Sandias three or four times. It doesn't make any sense why I had this amazing area in basically my backyard and I wasn't going. Uh, but I was always pining for going on trips like to the Pecos or to the Gila right and the fact is is you're not going to get the experience you're not going to learn your own limits and abilities and also gain experience at the same time mentally and physically unless you just go out and it might be intimidating especially if you're going by yourself for day hikes or something but just do it and i guarantee you will enjoy it my last tip is i hesitated putting this one on the list too because this one is not so much for beginners i i think it's a beginner tip but i think Doing this transforms you from a beginner to more of an inter intermediate level backpacker. And that's to not be afraid to go solo. And I think a lot of people, maybe day hiking solo is not that worrisome. But for a lot of people, spending that night in the backcountry is a big mental hurdle. You know, I hadn't spent a night in the backcountry by myself until 2018 when I hiked in the Bandelier Wilderness. And I thought it was going to be really scary. It actually wasn't. It was actually pretty easy. Now, granted, I popped a sleeping pill to make sure that I was out. But in any event, you know, you find out after the first few trips that you're not going to get killed by some sort of stray animal. So like Chico Hiker, who tagged two channels for his video, me and another great channel, Ultralight Outdoors, I'm going to tag two channels for this five beginner backpacker tips video. The first channel I'm going to tag, one of my favorite channels, another local guy. I've shouted him out before, so it might not be surprising. Mondana Man Adventure. It's a great YouTube channel. He does a lot of ATVing and backpacking and hiking around central New Mexico, particularly the Manzana Mountains, hence the name. And the other channel I'm gonna tag is out of North Carolina, another really awesome channel, one of my favorites, Lane's World. You know, I used to live in North Carolina and a lot of the hikes he does are hikes that I've done in the past. And he really does them justice. They're a really cool, really awesome channel. Both these guys, if they don't wanna do it, I totally understand, but check their channel out anyway. So just a quick channel update before I sign off. You know, I'm here on Hermit Peak, it's actually just started snowing, which is sort of cool. And this is where about a year ago today, I did my first New Mexico backpacking trip. So it's been about a year since my channel, I guess has taken off as far as the way I'd like it to in my vision. And I'm really grateful for anybody who watches. I, you know, I, I did this channel because once upon a time, I was a 17 year old kid just moved to New Mexico for school, had no friends, no family, didn't know the area, and it was watching YouTube videos and YouTube channels about New Mexico, about backpacking, about hiking and camping, 
that turned me on to the whole thing and really inspired me and taught me a lot of the skills I have and taught me about the amazing, beautiful places in the state and across the country and really across the world. So if nothing else, I hope somebody out there is watching this video and getting that, or maybe you just like the beautiful places, that's fine too. Um, real quick, I'm probably not gonna be coming out with any kind of backpacking videos for the next few months, which is unfortunate since it's about to be prime hiking season because I am expected to be a father in about a month and a half. And you know, I told my wife, I'm not gonna go out and spend multiple nights in the backcountry without cell signal and hours away from home when you could go into labor at any minute. So I'm really gonna be staying close to home for the next few months. I might still do some beer review type stuff or, or some other, I've got some other ideas floating around in my head for New Mexico and outdoors related things, but it won't be quite backpacking. So anyway, I'll see you guys after my sabbatical and thanks for watching again.